area uh, to visit MCNC and we got a chance to have him tonight, alhamdulillah. Zahra uh, al-Khair, may Allah reward him because he accepted our invitation. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and reward him for his effort. And Zahra al-Khair, I want to you uh, come to the masjid. Uh, just would like to advise all of you to come close the shift that it will be divine. Please try to come and close to the shift. Solipsists, the, the real bona fide, full-blown solipsists, 
does not believe that you have a mind. Uh, and and the, the, the ironic thing about solipsism is if you're a solipsist, you should not really propagate your theory. You should not really even speak of your theory. Because if you're true to your theory, there is no one else to hear it. Why, why speak of it if there is no one uh, else to hear it? Because to, to them, everything else is just a perception in my awareness. By the way, in the new brand of Guru, the, the heart, the divine uh, indwelling and union of Muslims, they actually uh, use the, this philosophical ground that everything that you think is existent is just basically a perception that you have. So it is an appearance, a perception, but doesn't have a reality. So forget about all of this and don't let it stick in your mind because it's all false. But the, the problem is, despite the fact that, we, that I know that you have a mind, because I'm not a solipsist, I don't believe in solipsism, uh, but I don't think that your mind is good enough. Uh, because whenever I argue with you, I do not, uh, I do not make the assumption or hold the assumption that as much as I am prone, as much as I am uh, entitled to correctness, you are entitled to correctness. As much as I am prone to error, you are prone to error. Or as much as you are prone to error, I am prone to, uh, to error. Which leads to what? Leads to the dialogue of the deaf. We talk, but you are not hearing me, I am not hearing you. كمثل الذي يلا يقول بما لا يسمع إلا دعاء ونداء. so Allah سبحانه وتعالى did actually talk about this phenomenon of hearing but not hearing. the likeness of the kafir is like one who calls upon those hajmawat cattle that uh, only hear that hear not but dua on the sounds and voices and calls. So how, how what does that mean? The likeness of their likeness or the likeness of the disbelievers is like a cat that only hear sounds and calls. They are deaf, blind, and mute, and they can, can comprehend not, or they don't comprehend. It is because they do not, they, 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 they are hearing. The prophets of Sabbath speak to them, but they are not listening. Or at least they are listening, but it is not benefiting. Because there is a difference between listening to voices and listening to speech. There is a difference between combining letters next to each other in words, and then words and sentences, and sentences and paragraphs, and you read them. You can read because you are not illiterate, you are literate, you can read. But you're only reading letters next to each other. You're lacking the comprehension. Or you're listening, but you're only listening to voices. You're lacking the comprehension. Uh, and we, we lack the comprehension because we do not want to comprehend. Because we get into a discussion decided, you know, previously determined. Uh, to come out of this discussion with the same opinion we held when we got into the discussion. Therefore, there is no chance for us to get anywhere, to make any uh, progress, because uh, 
if you and I get into the discussion and you're determined to come out of it untouched, you know, victorious, basically, then uh, uh, there is no reason for us to get into the discussion in the first place. Do not get into such a discussion. Uh, because it, it is useless. Unless you are talking about something that is as certain as the sun in the middle of uh, you know, summer day, uh, clear summer day. If you're talking about something that is as certain as the sun, sun in the middle of a clear summer day, then you, know, you can get into that discussion determined to come out uh, untouched regarding event issue, not regarding everything, because your opponent who does not believe in the sun in the middle of a clear summer day may mention something during the discussion that would be of benefit for you. So keep your ears open, even though he's not making much sense. Uh, so the Prophet said, maybe uh, uh, one will be a conveyor of fatwa, understanding, to one who is more of a fatim than him, or more understanding than him. One will be a conveyor of knowledge uh, to one who is who was endowed with more understanding. In other words, the conveyor of wisdom, uh, if, he, if he himself is not living up to that wisdom, is not holding on to that wisdom, should not prevent you from accepting that wisdom. I'll give you an extreme example. And it's the most extreme example is what that you can mention in this regard. This is the hadith that was reported by Bukhari from Abi Hurairah about the shaitan and Bukhariya was guarding the, the house of the treasury of the shaitan. Okay. So the shaitan talks him like, to read that the person he first read. Then he came to the Prophet and the Prophet said to him, uh, What did your you know, associate in some sense? since did last night. And the whole writer told them. So the Prophet of Sultan said to him, Salataka wa kazu. Atadri man hatha, inna hu shayta. So the writer told them, you know, that he caught the shayta, and the shayta told him, I'll teach you something that will benefit you when you get to your back, you, you recite that the short here that will protect you from shayta and evil and so on. And then the Prophet said to Abu Hurairah, Abu Hurairah did not say to the Prophet did not come and tell the Prophet the Prophet knew Allah SWT uh, made him aware of this incident. And then he asked Abu Hurairah, well, what, what did you do with that your companion last night? He said such and such. And then the Prophet said, Salatak wa kazu. He told you the truth, even though he is a persistent liar. He told you the truth, even though he is a persistent liar. Do you know who was with you last night? It was a shaitan. So the shaitan of the shaitan, the devilishness of the devil, did not prevent the Prophet from recognizing the truth that he said, even the shaitan. Uh, so that is like a very good example that you should keep your ears open even if you are you know debating with someone that is deserving of error and ignorance and misguidance and everything uh, you still should keep your ears open because you should have the quality of discernment that needs discernment between that which is good and that which is bad. And the quality of discernment you will have uh, if you have a background, a foundation of authentic knowledge, the knowledge of the revelation, the book of Allah, 
and the Sunnah of the Prophet and you have a logical process of thinking, like the intuitive uh, thinking, logical thinking, uh, which needs sometimes to be boosted uh, by learning of mantak or logic that is sound, that is purified from logical uh, myths. Because logic or mantak is not all this phrase. In fact, some of it is essential. In fact, usul al to a great extent, in many parts of usul al is based on logic. Not only this, logic is one of the three sources of usul al Usul al is the recipe by which you make fat. And usul al itself is is taken from three sources. What are they? al wahi the revelation. Uh, the revelation is the Quran and Sunnah both. The wahi the revelation. Al-Lubha, Talaq. Al-Wahi, al Three sources. Uncontroversial, non-debate. Al-Wahi, Al-Lubha, al in the month that has been disgraced by our scholars is not the correct month. It is when the uh, it is when we draft away or that we drift away from the correct month. That is when they go into philosophical convoluted paths that take them to misguidance. But there is got to be some degree of a understanding of critical thinking. Critical thinking is about logic. Critical thinking is important. Do you know why we have such troubles in our countries? Because people don't employ the quality of critical thinking. You can feed them any information and they will take it. They will take it. You can generalize the specific or you can use any logical fallacy to convince them of anything and they would follow because they lost the quality of critical thinking. In fact, the educational systems in our countries work to make you lose the quality of critical thinking. They sort of ruin your ability to be a critical thinker. And if you take a sample of children in Muslim countries that are four or five years of age, three and four and five, years of age and compare them to count their counterparts in Europe, you will find the levels of intelligence comparable to their counterparts in Europe, to their peers in Europe. Within three to four years from um, starting elementary school, they will have greatly dropped. Uh, because it is actually meant to make lose your ability of critical thinking. So discernment is based on having the right knowledge and following the right process of thinking. Uh, and the right process of thinking requires you to learn critical thinking, to learn how to make logical fallacies. In fact, the Shaykh of Muqtarq Nabuna, if you start to consider the month uh, in, in uh, his explanation on uh, a treatise on month, so if you say that the Nawawi uh, forbade it, forbade learning logic, and in the Salah and the Suyuti, uh, I would rebuttal by saying this pertains to the logic that was laid down by the philosophers, the logic that was purified by the Muslim scholars is obligatory to learn by the scholars. Uh, because because it, it guides your path the thinking process. Okay, so you need to, to sort of arm yourself with the quality of uh, discernment and that 
that quality of discernment will be based and dependent on your thinking process, which is correct, and your knowledge of the truth, the ultimate truth, which is Allah, the revelation, the Quran, and uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet. To be able to discern the truth from falsehood. But is this enough? My opinion 
because that's what he believes. You know, if he didn't believe that this opinion is correct, he would have, uh, you know, helped it. So my opinion is correct, but uh, liable to error or prone to error. Uh, the opinion of my opponent or others is incorrect in my understanding, but it may be correct. Uh, or it is, it is possible, possibly correct, probably incorrect, possibly correct. And, and that's how we should go about it. So when we enter into a dialogue, you know, we need to understand that your opponent is also uh, an existent person that has a mind, and his mind is capable of thinking just like your mind. I'll take you 360 degrees. And, and take you back to not think of your opponent as an existent being with a mind. Because that is important too. Uh, why, is, why is that important? Because if you uh, People, uh, if they walk after Kabla Sabbath, Karinta Nadija, or if they walk after Rinda Sabbath, Karinta Nadija, if you stand before the cross, you will not earn the result. And if you stand at the cross, you would still not earn the benefit or the result. Basically, Sabbath or the cause is the what Allah SWT created uh, to be uh, an instigator of a result. But if you if you ignore the causes, that is what we do oftentimes. We don't make provision and take precautions. We don't do the right thing for and we say, well, let's, you know, rely on Allah, let's rely on Allah. Like the Prophet Sallallahu relied on Allah and, and when he emigrated from Mecca to Medina, he did every possible thing correct, precisely, excellent plan, and so on, and relied on Allah. But then if you stop at the seven, around the seven, you will not be able to see the true effector, which is Allah. If this is just a seven. Uh, you know, your plan, the, the plan, the good plan is just a setup for success. It's a cause for success. But if you get stuck here and you think that good planning, good planning uh, is uh, a definitive cause for success, or success is a natural consequence, natural, spontaneous consequence of good planning, you lost. Because you, you stood by the cause and you did not see the ultimate effect of it. The one who created the cause. Uh, and, and you would have uh, lost. Therefore, in your dialogue with, with your brother, we said that you should understand that your brother has a mind like yours. But then you should go back and ignore his mind for some time or ignore his presence, ignore his existence for some time. And that is the, the concept of vanishment, of perception, financial, that, you know, if, in your perception, all of the existent beings vanish as if they do not exist. Because you are actually observing the ultimate perspective. The, 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 the one who is an ultimate control, which is Allah. All of those are tools, are tests and trials for you. Your wife, your wife, for instance, you wake up in the morning, and the first thing you hear is your wife yelling at you. Now, you could stand there, get stuck there, at the yelling of your wife, and think about what you should do, or vice versa. She wakes up in the morning, and first thing she hears, her husband is yelling at her. 
She can get stuck there. She can, yeah, and, and oftentimes we do. Yeah. She may not be able to see beyond her husband, or you may not be able to see beyond your wife. But guess what? Yeah. Your wife, or your husband,